Good morning, Denise Dryden out here on Bainbridge Island and you can see in the window the view that I have but because of the lighting it's almost impossible to to do this video and and get that kind of scenery in there so I thought I'd give you a little picture of it up there. Um, it's the end of August and it's you know we've been in a climate now for months of um, heaviness, of fear, of um, wondering what's going on in, with our politics, what's going on with our ne economics, what's going on with our health. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to bring in the most important tool that I've, that I've worked with from the very beginning of the coaching I've done with parents and with family systems, which is how do you train yourself to see the good? How do you see the good things, right? So what I wanted to do was start first that what we choose to see is our choice. It's always our choice and it's our own perspective. And so it's easy to read the news and, you know, watch the conflicts and feel the pain and the fear and everything that's going on. And it's easy to look around and see visions of that, pieces of that in every part of our life around us, right? Whether it's the food, you know, the food um, selections going down in the grocery store, um, the, the, the prices are going up, people are kind of glaring at each other through their masks and you're kind of like, oh man, this is just getting worse and worse and worse, right? And what we do is we see the problems, we see the mistakes, we see um, everything that's going wrong, which you know, of course, because it's a little terrifying right now. But when we put our magnificent attention towards something, it magnifies. That's the most important thing to recognize. So whatever we put our attention to magnifies, completely expands. So whether it's, um, you look in the mirror and you go, oh man, I'm just getting older, or I'm getting heavier. Or you look at your partner and you see something in them that reminds you that, 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 that there's something wrong with them. They're, they're gaining weight, they're getting gray, they're not smiling anymore. You know, our children, our world, our fears, you can put your eyes onto any of that. And we are so powerful that what happens is what we put our eyes on, we magnify and we build and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So we get caught in this, this cycle, this loop, where what we're doing is we're doing nothing but repeating what we're seeing or thinking inside in the outer world around us. And so in the work that I've done for the last 25 years with the family systems, um, it, I, I'll give you an example of a teen who fails, fails academically, um, refuses to go to school, can't do the work, can't do the institution of education, can't deal with the overwhelm, can't deal with the pressures to perform. And all of a sudden, what we have is us as parents, us as adults are looking and seeing, oh no, we have to be very afraid. And so I've watched this cycle repeat itself over and over again. And so that's the coaching work that I do, which is we have something that's happened in the system and we have all of the members of the family focusing on what happened. Now, often what I see is a parent who sees that they won't that the child won't do the work, that they won't try, that they won't go to school, that they won't overlook the um, pressures, that they, and, and so they focus on this word won't, 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 and won't is kind of like a judgment, right? It's where judgment and fear, which is I have to do something to get this kiddo to want to do something different. And so we're, you know, we have this well-honed eye that's focusing on, oh no, then he did this. Oh no, then he did that. Or oh no, then she's she's now retreating into her room. And so this cycle gets impossible to break. And so sometimes we'll see attempts. We'll see some like, yeah, I'll give it a, I'll give it a little bit of a try. And then we see failure. And then we see moments of performance where where the, the teen acquiesces or tries to do what mom and dad want. And there's this undercurrent and then there's just like this platform fails again. Because what we have is this cyclical version of focusing on what's not working and what is scaring the parent and what the parent wants to have happen. And we have to be able to get in and break that. So what I wanna do is I wanna take that skill set and move it over to us as we're dealing with our outer world right now, as we're dealing with all of the things that are going on. 
So if there's an undercurrent in our lens, and when we're afraid, we see danger, and when we're worried, we see things to be worried about. You know, we, be, we get into this hyper alert energetic system. It's almost like we're in constant fight or flight. We're triggered and we're looking for evidence to prove, oh yes, this is why I need to be afraid. Oh yes, this is why I need to be worried. Oh yes. And we're exhausted. Everyone in the whole, especially if we go back to this family systems work, everybody in the whole family system is afraid. Um, we're, we're energetically overtaxed and our body gets warm, worn down, our immunity system drops and we get sick. So, so this loop of focusing on the negative, focusing on the things that, that we're afraid of, focusing on what we are worried is going to happen is what brings us into that loop. And we just over and over and over again. So how do we break this? I was watching a um, video with Andrew Bartis and Sean Leaf this last um, week. And I loved the idea that no matter how dark this loop gets, how big and bad you've manifested this level of fear, you can stop and catch yourself and recreate. And I like the word that Sean put onto it, which is recreate your life. Recreate the ways that you do things. So you're, you're, you're stopping the loop and you're getting out of the repetitiveness. So when we become willing to do something different, then we get into this period of choice, right? This is where, this is where choice makes every bit of difference. It's our lens and we get to choose what we want to create. We get to choose what we want to feel. We get to choose what we want to experience. And, you know, in a lot of my previous videos, what we, I've talked about is that form follows thought. Form in our external wor world follows what we believe in our internal world. And so our external world is a mirror of what we feel on the inside. So the only thing we can do is choose to change the, the, the thought patterns, the feelings, the emotions on the inside so that we know how to start seeing things differently on the outside. So we choose to do something so we can see the good. So going back to our team who can't go to school, what we're dealing with is overwhelm, anxiety, expectations. The nervous system is in, is frayed and there's this angry energy, there's this fa failure energy in the house. So again, using this tool of having choice, we choose to see what he or she is doing, feeling, and experiencing. We have to choose to see it differently, right? So you calm your energy system down, you calm your breathing down, you calm your home down, and you calm down the relationship and you let it unfold. This is the only way to stop something is to stop promoting where it's going, bring it back, freeze it, and then turn and go a different direction and go towards what am I noticing that's working? Find the good things to see, the good things to feel, the good things to experience. Look at what you're noticing. Explore your thoughts, pay attention to your actions, soften, smile, relax. We have to, we have to loosen that grip of it so that it can start to unfold and show us what else is possible. So we let go of the pushing and the forcing and the enforcing and the effort and we allow and we explore and we create and we connect with new ways. This is the work of the parent. This is the work of the parent to self, parent to others, parent to the world. This is how we change our world. We recreate the way we see the world. This is our biggest most significant thing we can do on this planet is we recreate. We choose to look at everything and see everything from beauty and from good. And we change the dynamics from pressure to acceptance. So part of what I do on this video series each week is I give you some tools. So I wrote down seven things that um, I work with on a constant basis with parents. Because when we have the dynamic, yes, the child has to change their outlook, their performance in school, their issues. We know this. But we have to start and we have to lead with how we change the dynamics in the relationship. So the first thing is we loosen our body. We loosen our mind. We let go of the grip. We have to realize that we're holding on to something and we're recreating a loop, right? So we loosen it. And we go, oh, I have to let this go. 
Number two, we use movement, breathing, walking, nature, all of these things. And we go and we do them by ourselves. We take our ear pods off. We take our phone and we put it away. We go by ourselves. We don't get involved in distraction or news or conversations with somebody. We use this time to loosen up our body and to get outside and to start letting that grip go. And, and, and what I hear over and over again is that would be nice if I had the time. This is how we have to make the time because somehow we've got to get into movement, breathing, walking, something in nature to start to loosen this grip because we're going to go into a training period. So number three is we have to train our eyes to see. When we look out at the world, we have to choose to see things. And so it's sort of like looking around and going, what is it that I actually see that's beautiful? What is it that I see that's wonderful? What is it that I see that makes me smile? right? So you catch yourself. And when you stray into this critical mind, like, ow, I, you know, they've been so bad to the sound with pollution, just go like, and just go, wow, look at the water. Look at the reflection of the sun on the water right now. So we train our eyes to see specific things. Number four, we empower our sight and our ability to see. So we gather two or three things that catch our eyes, that are good, that are beautiful, right? That are kindness, that are soft presence. And we look at them and we bring them together. So while I'm writing this this morning, I'm sitting in front of this window looking at the water and I'm watching the light coming up on the water as the day is getting brighter. And I've got a, a new kitten um, sleeping right on the chair next to me. And, and, and then I got to sort of look, get to look at how the light is playing off of this, this glass figure that's in the window. And I just sort of look around and I smile and go, one, two, three. These are the things that I can catch right now in my eye that make me feel them. Look at this. The water is beautiful and peaceful. The cat is adorable. The glass is just magnificent the way it's picking up the light. Number five make an internal statement about what I notice. My world is peaceful and beautiful. These three things right now bring in peaceful and beautiful. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge the good. This is what peaceful and beautiful feels like. This is what peaceful and beautiful looks like. Number six, expand this peaceful, good, beautiful awareness out and beyond your body. So now what we do is we've take we've we've changed the way we see things, right? We've noticed them and we've started to collect them and we've started to say this are these are the things I'm going to hold on to and then we begin to expand them in our body. We take our body bigger and bigger and bigger and we fill the house. We say I'm here. I see such beauty around me. This is good. And then you look around and you go, and there's another piece of beauty. There's another piece of something good. There's something I love about the way my husband smiles or my child giggles or the way the cat sleeps. It doesn't really matter. You know, pick something in your life, right? Pick something. I love the way my wife smiles when she has her coffee. Think of something that you can hold on to that brings up that beauty, right? This is good. And then repeat, look for more, always look for more. Look for more when you're at the farmer's market, look for more when you're at the grocery store, look for more when you head into work, look for more in every place that you are and start to build a foundation of the things that are good in our world. This is how we change the world. This is how powerful we are. And I know that this is probably the hardest work that we've ever had to do because there's so much around us that we have to cut through it and we have to find those little strings of goodness and then we have to keep pulling on them and building our world in that because when we build our world in that and our internal world starts to see goodness around us then goodness starts to show up outside and all of that other stuff starts to calm down and go away if any of you have been around an erratic pet or a family system or an office system that when you bring yourself down into calmness and beauty everything else around you changes this is a validation that what we hold inside shows up on the outside. So these are the kind of things I do each week. Um, you can find me every Sunday morning. And uh, 
You can also find me on denisedrydencoaching.com where my videos and some of my services are available. So if this is something you want to learn more about, by all means, contact me and let me know. You have a wonderful Sunday and I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.